Live from WKMG, the problem solvers. This is Local 6 News at 11, quoted Florida's best newscast. Tonight, a local mother is fighting for her life, hoping for a medical miracle. She is undergoing a procedure that has never been seen before on television until now. An experimental stem cell transplant that could save her life. Miguel Piedra is bringing us Christie's courageous and inspiring story. I had so many obstacles in my way, so many people and things and reasons to, to try and keep me from here. More than 1,100 miles from her home in Longwood, 28-year-old Christy Tubman embarked on a life-saving journey to Chicago. I knew somehow I'd find a way. I just knew I wasn't going to let them cut me up, and I wasn't, you know, I said, I'll, if I don't get to Chicago, I'll die first. Inside this hospital, Christy will become only the fourth person in the world to undergo an experimental stem cell transplant to cure her Crohn's disease. Crohn's disease is a disease in which your immune system attacks your own intestinal tract. A procedure never before documented by a television news crew. I feel extremely lucky, extremely lucky. Because I look into the, the place of the chat rooms and the computer alone and out into the world at all this hundreds and hundreds and thousands of people out there that are sick and they don't have the hope that I have today available to them. Hi, Christy. Her hope lies in the hands of Dr. Richard Burt and his team at Northwestern Memorial Hospital. I trust Dr. Burt with, obviously, with my life. Here, Christy will spend the next two months having her immune system revamped and retooled. It's a risky procedure. There's an unknown. Showing incredible promise. Our cameras were granted unprecedented access to Christie's transplant, where doctors will take her own blood stem cells, clear them of Crohn's disease, and reintroduce them. Treat with drugs or surgery. You know, the traditional things that have always been available out there. But it never really cured anything. Um, I need something to fix my legs. It hurt really bad. It's early May. Her mother by her side, Christie, has already undergone several days of testing. Well, when will they know how many good cells they get out of that? And a week of chemo. She's now ready to have her stem cells harvested. Really? Yep. From a catheter in her neck, nurses draw the blood through one tube. This machine separates her cells, then pumps her blood back into her body. But the time away from home is beginning to take its toll on Christy. I get homesick a lot because you're so far away, and I haven't seen my son for the better part of a month. She knows she's getting close. From here, her blood is taken to a lab where the medical miracle takes place. All the negative cells will wash away, which is actually the purpose of this whole thing, is to remove the unwanted cells. For three hours, her cells are run through this machine, then separated. Take a look as her Crohn's carrying cells stick to these special magnets. The magnet will come out and actually hold this the with the cells and rinse out all the negative cells. Her healthy cells are then frozen and her immune system cleared before those same healthy cells can be reintroduced back into her body. And then these cells on their own will home right to where they belong. Christy, now halfway through her transplant, is already beginning to feel the changes to her body. And how it's abdominal pain from the Crohn's. I haven't had it that. And while the riskiest part of this procedure is still to come, she believes this revolution in medicine holds the key to ending the suffering. I believe that this will give people time and it'll give people the ability to use that time for what they want to have actually live their lives. And tonight, Christy is halfway there. She's undergoing her second round of chemotherapy. In just a few days, she will undergo her actual transplant. From there, it will take about 10 days for her stem cells to readjust to her immune system. She is expected home in the next few weeks. Really, you're just an amazing story. I'm so glad to see Christy getting the help that she needs. A lot of folks I know interested to continue following this. We've only seen a, a couple of minutes in this, in this story. You got a way that they can continue to follow her treatment. She has been keeping a journal, and she has offered to share her story on mycfnow.com if you're interested on charting her project. Yeah. Pro pro if project, you're yeah. So yes, uh, all you have to do is log on to mycfnow.com. Yeah, great, and a lot of other, other news on there as well. That's right. Terrific. All right, Tom? You're watching Chicago's very own WGN News with Allison Payne, Steve Sanders, Tom Skilling, and Rich King. This is WGN News at 9.
On the medical watch tonight, a new way to treat Crohn's disease when all else fails. Yeah, you know, there is no cure for Crohn's, but now there's new hope that stem cell transplants may translate into a cure around the corner. WGN's medical reporter Dina Baer has more now on how doctors believe it will help patients conquer the immune disorder. After living for 20 years with and against Crohn's disease, I've come to a point where all medications have failed. Literally nothing helps. It does help emotionally for Kathy Duffy to document her feelings in a journal. But there are days her disease leaves her too weak to even do that. Really bad diarrhea and stomach pain before. Um, really, I would go until I couldn't go on anymore, whether it was um, the pain, the energy level. Um, it caused a lot of bleeding inside. The bleeding was caused by intestinal tearing. As her body rehealed, it left her inside so scarred, Kathy's appendix, ovary, and uterus all had to be surgically removed. The surgeon said that there were parts of the bowel that they actually had to saw through. They were so thickened and scarred. And the scars weren't just physical. 20 years of defeat and treatment left Kathy feeling like she wanted to give up her fight. If it was for me to be ill, um, then, then that was, you know, I, I could accept that as God's will. Northwestern doctor Richard Burt told Kathy she didn't have to carry the burden of Crohn's forever. Perhaps inside her sick body were cells that were the key to making her healthy. The person has an immune system, but it's, it's become a terrorist immune system. It's attacking your own body, and it's very, very aggressive, and it can't be controlled. So let's just destroy it and then start over with new stem cells and generate a new immune system. But first, the savior cells have to be retrieved. They're taken from the blood, hundreds of millions at a time. Then they're cleansed and frozen. In the meantime, patients undergo high doses of chemotherapy for four days straight. This treatment is, um, it's tough. It's real tough. Tough because patients are literally stripped of their immune system. They're extremely weak. That's when their stem cells are reinfused, and within days, they will regenerate. The immune cells come from the stem cells. So the stem cell can be viewed as kind of this uh, baby that has the potential to grow up and become something in its adult life. And after being sick from her teen years, Kathy hopes at 38, her adult life will finally be pain-free. It'll be amazing. It's going to be amazing. This is just a phase one trial testing the procedure. Four Crohn's patients have completed the stem cell transplant so far. One of them is a whole year now with no clinical symptoms at all. On the Medical Watch, Dina Baer, WGN News. Live from Chicago's NBC5, Warner Saunders, Allison Rosati, Brant Miller Weather, and Darian Chapman Sports. This is NBC5 News. Attend. Stem cell transplants are providing new breakthroughs in medicine. Northwestern Memorial Hospital is one of the only centers in the country doing studies of stem cell transplants with a patient's own blood to help treat a number of diseases. NBC 5's Health Watch reporter, Dr. Deanna Lice, is here to explain. Dr. Lice? Warner, collecting stem cells from the patient's bloodstream is a lot easier than taking it from their bone marrow. It can be done outside of an operating room, and it doesn't require general anesthesia. Northwestern is using the procedure to treat a number of diseases, like lupus, multiple sclerosis, Crohn's disease, and rheumatoid arthritis. And doctors are seeing some remarkable results. I mean, it just affected the like last year. It started affecting me. 29-year-old Susan Glenn tries to communicate, but it's difficult. Her brain is one of her organs affected by systemic lupus erythematosus, an autoimmune disease where a person's immune system begins to attack its own organs. For Kathy Hammonds, looking at Susan is like looking in a mirror. It's a reminder of how lupus nearly killed her three years ago. I had brain involvement. I I, so I was unable to watch a movie. I was unable to comprehend reading a book. Kathy's brain wasn't the only area affected. Lupus was destroying her heart, pancreas, and lungs. None of the medication she took helped. So I couldn't climb stairs. I couldn't walk further than 100 feet. I, I was very close to being an invalid. I, they probably they gave me about 90 days to live when I came to Northwestern. Then Kathy found out about new research at Northwestern Memorial Hospital. 
Doctors like Ann Trainer were using a patient's own stem cells to fight the disease. When we began the program, all we indicated to the patients and all we hoped was that we would arrest uh, the fulminant process of their disease. But the stem cells did more than just stop the disease. They reversed it. Stem cells, which are immature blood cells produced in the bone marrow, have the extraordinary ability to transform a diseased immune system into a new healthy one. Here's how it works. Susan's stem cells are removed from her bloodstream. The stem cells are separated in the laboratory from other blood components and frozen. Then Susan is given chemotherapy to destroy any harmful cells in her body. A few weeks later, the stem cells from the lab will be put back into Susan's bloodstream. It's similar to a blood transfusion. Those stem cells will travel into her bone marrow to produce the new immune system. Dr. Trainer says the results have been remarkable. We never anticipated the extent to which lungs, hearts, kidneys, and brains would be able to return to normal. It will take a few weeks to determine whether Susan's transplant is a success. For Kathy, it's been a lifesaver. I've been free of any lupus symptoms and any lupus drugs for three years. I'm like any normal 43-year-old now. And Dr. Trainer says once Susan's transplant is complete, she should be off for most of her medicine within a couple of months, and within six months, she'll be getting back to normal. So we'll definitely follow up with her. Mm -hmm. And she's the 21st person to have this procedure for lupus, and Kathy was the fifth. It's remarkable. Everybody's doing well. Mm -hmm. That's good news. Thank you. ABC 7 News at 10 continues with Ron Majors, Diane Burns, weather with meteorologist Jerry Tabb, and sports with Mark Jean Greco. In a special segment tonight, Managing MS. Doctors are now testing two procedures that hold promise for people who have multiple sclerosis. Health Beat reporter Sylvia Perez is here with details on the experimental treatments that appear to be putting the disease on hold, Sylvia. Diane, multiple sclerosis is a crippling disease affecting an estimated 350,000 Americans. Symptoms can be mild or so severe it leaves patients bedridden. For many people, medication is effective, but for others, the drugs just don't work. That's why researchers are now looking at ways to essentially trick the body into healing itself. I never believed that I could get this sick. Matthew Kruzman was just 29 when he was diagnosed with MS. From the start, medication didn't work. Matthew's symptoms never let up. He was either blind or partially paralyzed. So he opted for a different experimental treatment called stem cell therapy. The concept here is then to go in and kind of just destroy the immune system and start all over with brand new stem cells to generate a new immune system. Northwestern Memorial Hospital in Chicago pioneered stem cell transplants for MS and other neurological disorders. Researchers here are beginning a new trial for MS patients who are not doing well on medication but have not yet suffered much disability. It's kind of a concept that, you know, the brain is a very vital organ. And if you wait too long before you intervene, there's certain damage that will never be reversed and will probably still continue to progress. So you need to move early. Matthew knew this controversial therapy carried the risk of death. But his gamble so far appears to have paid off. One year after therapy, he is symptom-free. He says being able to make up for lost time with his children was worth the risk. I can play with my girls again. I can take them for walks. I could do all kinds of things. I can brush their hair. All the things I couldn't do while um, I was being affected with MS. A reminder, both of these therapies are still experimental and are done only in clinical studies. Dr. Richard Burt with Northwestern is emphasizing that the latest MS stem cell trial is not for patients who are doing well with interferon. And while the treatment does appear to be very successful in stopping the progression of MS, the goal is to see if stem cell transplants can actually prevent disability. Ron and Diane. Really? That is that great? Remarkable. Yeah. Your money. Experimental health treatments, potentially life-saving. So why shouldn't insurance pay for this? From NBC News World Headquarters in New York, this is NBC Nightly News with Tom Brokaw. Now our special series this week, Your Money. Tonight, who should pay, you or your insurance company, 
for expensive experimental health treatments that could restore your health, but they do carry a big price tag. More from NBC's national correspondent, Jim Avila. 47 years ago, this mechanical pump kept Johnny Watson alive during open heart surgery. Commonplace today, pioneering experimental medicine in 1955. I was the sixth person to receive the surgery on this machine. I was the third person to live. For nearly five decades, Watson's been a walking advertisement for experimental surgery. Medical procedures tested in clinical trials run by the government and medical universities. More than 4,500 underway in the United States today. Many of them not covered by insurance. The industry says it's cautious and denies payment because they've not been thoroughly proven effective. There is this view that the newest is better than the oldest, and that may be true sometimes, but it's uh, certainly not true a lot of other times. Christy Tubman says new is better in her case, raising $75,000 in donations and grants for her experimental stem cell procedure to cure Crohn's disease that made her feel like knives stabbing her stomach, sometimes a fatal illness. I've spent the last decade or more in a hospital bed, and that's no more. Jackie Roca suffers the same stomach pain and has been through 15 different medications. Without stem cells, the next step is removal of her gastrointestinal system. But her insurance company has denied coverage three times. There's a clause in the contract that says they don't um, pay for investigational, experimental, da, 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 and it goes on and on and on. That, say doctors, is the problem. Experimental is a non-technical term. That procedure has been performed here at Northwestern Memorial Hospital in clinical trials six times successfully. But the long-term testing won't be complete for five years. We've taken people who have failed everything with horrible disease, a lot of suffering, and, you know, they've become clinically normal. Some insurance companies do cover some clinical Absolutely. trials, but the industry contends covering them all would drive rates up. Expensive and unproven results, even if experimental surgeries can keep patients alive for decades. Jim Avila, NBC News, Chicago. For complete coverage, this is KETD News Watch 7 at 10. A doctor is convinced he has a treatment for multiple sclerosis, rheumatoid arthritis, and other autoimmune disorders. The catch, the treatment itself may be deadly. So far, though, there are only success stories among patients willing to take a risk for relief. One of those patients is from Council Bluffs. He went to Chicago to get his treatment. Health Watch investigator Margaret Booman has more. You're watching what could be a revolutionary treatment. A stem cell transplant for an autoimmune disorder. The patient is Brian Hill from Council Bluffs. He has Crohn's disease. One day I went, I went to the doctor at the med center and I said, I'm 24, I'm living at home because I had to move back in. I can't work a full-time job. Something needs to be done. Brian was so fed up with Crohn's disease, he was willing to try just about anything, even if it went against his local doctor's advice and it meant traveling far from home. I'm just, I'm ready to try something new. I, I don't, I don't care about the risks, really, to be honest, <laughs> so. They do stem cell transplants for autoimmune disorders in Omaha, but Council Bluffs resident Brian Hill had to come here to Chicago. That's because Northwestern University is currently the only place in the nation doing stem cell transplants for Crohn's disease. We are the lead institution. Yeah, we're the people that pioneered it. It began more than a dozen years ago when Dr. Richard Burt was working with transplant patients at Johns Hopkins University. He noted the patients were being re-immunized with childhood vaccines. Dr. Burt theorized the patients needed to be re-vaccinated because high-dose chemotherapy and the resulting immunosuppression had destroyed their body's immunological memory of the childhood vaccines. Dr. Burt thought, why not use the same process to destroy immunological memory in patients with autoimmune disorders? Then, with a stem cell transplant, they'd have a new disease-free immune system. It works. That's the important thing. To date, Northwestern University has done 75 stem cell transplants on patients with autoimmune disorders. The treatment is potentially fatal. And, and we actually tell patients to expect a 5% chance of mortality. High-dose chemotherapy dramatically suppresses the immune system. The patient feels awful and is at risk of dying from minor infections. 
That's why this treatment is restricted to patients who failed all other therapies. But you were told, basically, in effect, it's over. Oh, yeah, we went to the Mayo Clinic, and they said, we can't do anything for your sister. We're very sorry, and it's unfortunate. Julie Wick's sister was dying from lupus. Even so, her doctor said a stem cell transplant was too dangerous. Well, what he indicated is that there's no way that she'll be able to survive that treatment. And I said, she's dying today. So you're telling us that you want her to die in the hospital without hope? Months after the transplant, Julie's sister shows no signs of lupus. Julie wants to share her story because she believes patients deserve to know. There really is hope. And I just want to do whatever I can to share that because it's an amazing gift. But the patients who've lived with serious and debilitating disease lost their job, had to neglect their families, etc. Yeah. They want a solution. Northwestern University's Dr. Ann Trainer says else. doctors may be reluctant to talk about stem cell transplant for autoimmune diseases because research in this area is still so new. I'm, surpri I'm surprised that I'm surprised that the patients are fearless. It's the physicians that are afraid of the unknown. What doctors don't know is whether this potentially dangerous treatment provides more than a remission from autoimmune diseases. Only time will tell us now whether it never comes back. On February 11th, Brian Hill became the seventh American patient with Crohn's to get a stem cell transplant. Are you, are you looking forward to the day where you can be independent, working on your own? Yeah, that's the goal. Well, that's the goal of this whole thing, so. Brian returned home last week. He is tired following the transplant, but looks forward to a long remission from Crohn's. Again, research in this area is still no, so new, there is no way of predicting how he'll do. Some of Dr. Burt's patients with other autoimmune disorders have had a remission of three to five years, but others have seen their disease return. Hey, Margaret, the cost of a stem cell transplant is very expensive, several hundred thousand dollars. Why pay for something that's not guaranteed to work? That's a great question, but remember, the patients have failed all of this other therapy. They're fed up with a system that charges them for treatment, but doesn't make them better. Many are disabled, spend lots of time in the hospital, and use very expensive drugs. So a stem cell transplant may actually cost less than the current treatment. Very interesting. Margaret, thanks. Mm -hmm.